Hi, I'm Zach from the AWS DHL team. In this video, we're going to introduce how to train a model in DHL. The first step to training is building an instance of the dataset class to contain your training data. The dataset is a collection of input and output pairs for the function represented by your neural network. Each pair is an instance of the record class, and each record might have multiple inputs or multiple outputs in it. But because deep learning is highly parallelizable, training is often not done with a single record at a time, but a batch of records. This can lead to significant performance gains. So the main requirement when building a data set for training is how do you sample the elements from your data set to build each batch? There are two main requirements to building a basic sampler, the batch size and whether it should be random or not. Although we're just using 32 for our batch size, it's typically the largest power of two that fits into memory. So as for randomness, training requires that the data should be random, but other uses of a data set may not. Then we just call prepare in order to actually load the model and download all of the data onto your machine. The next step is to build a trainer. The trainer is like a session that manages your training process. And to build the trainer, you need to add a training config. The only required argument to the training config is your loss. The loss is a measure of how well your model matches your data set. And this is the thing which is optimized during the training process. In addition to the loss, we're going to add an evaluator. An evaluator is also a measure of how well your model matches your data set and every loss is also an evaluator. However, many of the losses that are actually useful for optimization are not particularly intuitive. So adding evaluators can help us as humans understand how well our model is performing and how well it is improving. And finally, we're going to add training listeners. The training listeners add additional functionality to the training process. This can include showing training progress stopping early if the training becomes undefined, or recording performance metrics. We offer several easy sets of default listeners, including the logging one we're going to use here. We recommend always using at least one of our default sets of listeners. There are other options to the training configuration as well, such as the device, initializer, and optimizer that you can find in the Java doc. Then we can build a new trainer for our model. We're not going to talk about the model here, but you can see more information in our previous video, Building Blocks and Models. Once we have our trainer, we can use it to initialize our model. During initialization, all of the parameters in our model are set at random initial values from which they can then be improved on during the training process. We can initialize it with one as our batch size which does slightly speed up initialization. Otherwise, we should initialize it with the same shapes as our data set is going to be producing as inputs. Now we can train. We'll use the easy train utilities fit method, which provides the most common training procedure used in deep learning. It requires the trainer, which we just created, the number of epochs, but it is how many times during the training process you train on each element of your data set. This is equivalent to how much time you spend training your model. Next, we provide the training data set, which we're going to use to train on, MNIST. And finally, we provide the optional validation data set. This is a secondary data set used in addition to your training one. And because it contains data which you don't train on, it's a better reflection of how well your model is going to perform in the real world. At this point, we're done. We've successfully trained our model. The only step left is we want to save our model so we can still access it later. We're going to save it under the name of MLP onto the model directory in our file system. In the next video, we're going to see how to load our model and use it in a production system. Thanks for watching.